Boom. Greetings all. Last Outrider here with another What is the Age of Sigmar video. This time, well, if you watched the last video, you know we talked about the Seraphon. This time, we're going to be talking about the Slan. Are you ready? Good. Because they are the masters of order. Amongst the greatest wizards in existence, the ancient slan shape the very stars themselves with their magic. These mighty beings would see the mortal realms remade into an empire of order and light, and the servants of the dark gods eradicated for all time. It is the purpose of the slan, star masters, to bring about order and an era of perfect structure to the universe. Such an undertaking can be brought about in a myriad of ways, but there is one inescapable truth. The chaos gods seek to undo this plan. As the will of the slan made manifest, it is little wonder that the Seraphon are bitter enemies of chaos. Ever since the gaze of the dark gods first fell upon the mortal realms, these celestial beings have fought them. Yet the Slan are few when compared to the teeming armies of darkness. Chaos has grown powerful during an age of blood and the Seraphon must choose their battles wisely. But with the rising storm, the Seraphon now have allies to their cause. At last, there's a chance to turn back the tide. Swift and merciless is the Seraphon way of war. Their resolution to banish chaos, absolute. Through arcane might and primal savagery, their armies slay damned tyrants, cast down skull-studded fortresses, and seal corrupted realm gates, all in the name of preserving order. The true power of the Seraphon, however, lies not in their magic or strength of arms, but in the unfathomable plan that guides their every deed. The Dark Gods have learnt little during their long war with the Seraphon, as they still bicker and fight amongst themselves. The Slan, however, have pondered long and carefully upon how best to destroy their foe. To the Slan, the mortal realms are a great game board upon which the armies of chaos will be fought and defeated, placing each piece with precision. They are able to look many moves ahead of their enemy, engaging them in battle when and where they choose. Step by step, they manipulate fate to bring about the final and absolute defeat of chaos itself. Despite this unity of purpose, the Seraphon are also a divided race. Each slan and the cohorts of warriors they summon is but a fragment of a long dead civilization, and each has their own view of how the war for the mortal realms must be waged. The Slan will often endure millennia of solitude, only rarely connecting with their kin. In this time, each individual Slan pursues their own campaign against the servants of chaos, or those that would stand in the way perfect order for the realms. 
When many slan gather for war, it heralds a truly momentous battle. The stars themselves move into alignment, promising the destruction of empires. In such instances, the Seraphon are at their strongest. Their celestial might almost unrivaled. Though the Slan seem to care nothing for the stories of mortals, the myth of the Seraphon spreads across the mortal realms with each battle. Tales like that of Tokchoa, the bringer of the celestial dawn, who vanquished a horde of Cornite chariot riders with the cosmic light of a hundred engines of the gods. Qualakwal, master of the seven falling stars, who laid siege to the bubonic dreadhold of Scaramath. And Kokore, the dreaming seer of the nightmare war, who slew the great demon Belagrax on the shores of the ever-burning sea. Mortal concerns of time or space hold little meaning for the slam. Such is their power that they are able to bridge the vast distances between the stars and realms in an instant. They appear at will, their warriors never more than a thought away. Unlike a mortal army, or even Sigmar's storm-cast Eternals, the Seraphon need not muster before great bastions or stand in ranks awaiting the order to march. They are in a permanent state of battle readiness, materializing within the mortal realms as the first horns of battle blare, and then vanishing once more when the object of their wrath is utterly destroyed. The arrival of a Seraphon force can take many forms. Such is the power and scope of the magic the Slan used to summon them. Some ride down from the heavens upon falling stars, whilst others appear in beams of sunlight, striking down through the dark. Roiling clouds, striking down through the dark roiling clouds, their arrival is invariably swift and usually unexpected. As long as the Slan lives, fresh warriors can be called from Azir to tip the balance of a battle. Those few who have fought against the Seraphon and survived speak of cohorts of troops suddenly appearing on their flanks, or great Saurian beasts manifesting deep within their ranks. At the merest gesture, from their slan master. The Seraphon strike at places of the darkest power, seeking them out for their connection to the dark gods, rather than for any tactical reason. A mortal general might understand over centuries of war, countless sites where the followers of the dark gods have taunted the ground with their profane worship, have felt the Seraphon's wrath. The pillars of nightmares, hung with the gilded skulls of a thousand offerings, the thrice-forged wheel of bones, crafted from the screaming corpses of the peoples of the Shadow Loom Vale, or the blood gallows formed from a thousand beating hearts. All were terrifying monuments to the dark gods, cast into ruin by the seraphim. 
where once could be heard the frenzied exultations of chaos zealots, there is only the sound of the wind howling over fields of fang-scored bones. Hmm. Wow. <clears throat> okay. Here's another little snippet then. How did the Seraphon and the Slan come to meet each other? Let's find out with Tears of the Star Dragon. Tales tell of how during the Age of Myth, the great Drake Dracotheon came to guide the Seraphon into the mortal realms. From across the Gulf of Eternity, the Dracotheon held, beheld the glittering vessels of the Seraphon as they drifted like motes of dust through the darkness. Overcome with curiosity for these strange alien objects, he sought them out. When the star Drake drew closer, he sensed the minds of the Slan, and within their thoughts, a heady mixture of loss and rage. Communicating with the great ancient seers, Dracothian had a vision of the death of the world that was. Weeping in anger, the great Drake let out a piercing cry that echoed through the void. Drawn to this godly lament, the slan turned course of their vessels towards its source, following the blazing silver stars that were Dracotheon's tears. Thus did the Seraphon reach the realms of Azir and take their place within the heavens. Boom. Well, I gotta tell you this. If ever there was a race that's going to link Warhammer Age of Sigmar with Warhammer 40k, <laughs> it's going to be the Seraphon. I mean, they just, they just said it there. They were sailing in ships in space. There you go. Okay, I mean, it's obviously, at least obvious to me, that these are going to turn out to be the old ones, the builders of the webway, um, possibly even the hive mind. Seriously, I mean, they, they look pretty lizard-like to me a lot of the time. You never know. I, I, it says right there that, that each slan is a civilization unto itself. Each one persecuting the war against chaos in its own unique fashion. And by the way, they described how Seraphon arrive into battle, and they just kind of materialize at the darkest hour, at the darkest moment of the direst battle, and then just disappear afterwards. We, who else does that? Legion of the Damned? That's my guess. Uh, th yeah, there's, there's just too many connections here to be ignored. I think this is all, this is the bridge. This is the bridge between Warhammer 40k and, and Age of Sigmar that's coming. Uh, and and Dracotheon, to me, that sounds like the Void Dragon. And the Star Masters, that sounds like it's going to be a remake of the Satan. The Star Gods. Just a guess, people, uh, but, but I think there's a very good possibility that that's what we're going to be looking at here. They can travel across realms in an instant, across the galaxies in an instant. Uh, for all we know, the Tyranid are one of the ways one slan is battling chaos. Who knows? Or, 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 who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But there's, there's definitely going to be a relaunching of 40K coming soon. And I'm excited to see what it is. So until next time, bye.